How to make a cold call value statement. If your scripts just aren't working for you and you're tired of trying the techniques being taught on LinkedIn and by sales trainers, the pattern interrupts, permission-based openers, open-ended questions, then I think you're gonna like this solution here. This is a very simple three-step process that I've used for six years in B2B sales. I've taught this to hundreds of reps who have had success with this. And this is meant to be a very direct, no BS approach to cold calling. So if that resonates with you, then stick around because I'm gonna be delivering a live role play of how I actually use this framework to call prospects. So let's get into it. So the first key part of a value statement that differs than what's commonly taught out there is that we take control of the cold call. We are gonna do more of the speaking at the outset and less listening. And a lot of sales trainers will gasp at this. What, you're doing most of the talking? What do you mean? Good sales reps listen to their prospects. That's what they do. And I say yes, but you need to earn that right. Listening to your prospect implies that they're gonna be sharing useful information about their business, their challenges, what their priorities are, and you need to earn that right. When you cold call someone, you've typically just interrupted them in the middle of their busy work day and they're gonna be slightly irritated once they realize, I don't know this person and they just cold called me. That's why I say the burden of proof is on us to assure them that we're someone who's competent and we're not gonna waste their time, that we've been here and done this before and we may even be worth spending more of their time with. And you can't do this just by cold calling someone and asking questions and expecting them to start splurging on what their priorities and business challenges are. You don't sound any different than the tip typical cold caller out there. We need to be taking control and concisely getting to our point as to who we are, why we're calling and what we want, which I'm gonna to touch on in a second. And the way you do this is by giving what I call an assumptive formality. The purpose of a cold call opening, in my opinion, is just to advance to step two. This should take less than five to 10 seconds. I'm gonna talk about step two in a second, but an assumptive formality is quick. It's signaling, I'm not here to waste your time. I'm giving you a formality. Just give me a quick formality back and then I'll go right into why I'm calling. Hey John, this is Connor Murray calling from Max Company. How are you? You wanna give the type of formality with that downward inflection where the only thing they can really do is give you a quick phrase or formality back. Uh, good, how are you? What is this regarding? Whatever they say, then you just say, good, I'm just reaching out because, or good, the reason I'm calling is, and then we're gonna advance to step two within like five seconds. So that's it for step one in the opening. I don't like to overcomplicate this topic. I think people spend way too much mental energy on this. You have to find that line that elicits a formality for you. For me, it's just always been, how are you? It could have been, how have you been? Whatever it is, the purpose of the opening is to advance to step two. Once we get to step two, this is where we need to deliver on our promise that we're not gonna waste their time. And you need to give them three answers in what I say about 45 seconds. And you need to tell them who you are, why you're calling, and what you want. Because when a prospect answers the phone and they have no idea who you are and they realize, okay, this is a cold call, I'm walking to the break room, or I have this busy meeting I need to get to in the next three minutes, those are the three questions that are going on in their head subconsciously. Who is this person? Why are they calling me? And what do they want from me? The who you are is very simple. It's typically just your title and the company you work for. You don't need to overcomplicate this. There's ways to tweak it to make it sound more specific to the person you're calling. The why you're calling is the most important. This is the crux. This is the value part of the value statement. And there's three ways to include value. I think you need to touch on at least two of them. If you can get all three, great, but I think you only need two. And those are, what priorities and challenges do you solve? How do you solve these priorities and challenges? And what outcomes do you drive when you solve these priorities and challenges? Out of these three, I personally go with the first two most often because I think outcomes is very tricky. It's very hard to convince someone on an off the cuff cold call of some outcome that you have. We're gonna improve margins by 15%. And they're like, really? You don't know anything about my company or what we do here, what our processes are, and you're just saying that you can increase my margins 15%. Unless you have something that's very specific and unique to your role or your company, it's tough to give outcomes. So I personally just stick with what priorities we solve and how we solve them. So that's the why piece. And then the what is very simply time on their calendar or whatever you want from them. Typically, we're looking to set a meeting and that's what we want is time on their calendar. It could be your driving attendance to some event or some webinar, but you need to finish stating your intent because that's what gives you a shot on net and a non-zero probability of booking the meeting. So who you are, why you're calling, and what you want within 45 seconds, you have now answered those three key questions, and there's only three possible outcomes. Once you physically get out who you are, why you're calling, and what you want, and they don't hang up on you in the middle of that, if you physically get it out, now they're within your funnel, and there's only three outcomes. The outcomes are either yes, no, 
or an objection. So a yes would be if right out of the gate, they're like, yeah, I am free next week. Thanks for reaching out. This is the best case scenario. It doesn't always work out this way, but that's one of the three outcomes. You could get a hard no, which is, nope, I'm good. Thanks for reaching out, buddy. Click where they hang up on you or they just don't even give you anything at all to work with and they end the call. That's a hard no. And that's gonna happen a lot regardless of how good you get. This is part of sales. And you should be getting no's. If you're not, it probably means you're not pushing the boundaries enough and you're leaving opportunities in business on the table. You're not flipping over every stone. So you get used to getting no's. And then the only other outcome is an objection. So what I'll say here is out of the three possible outcomes, two are very self-explanatory. If they say yes, then just book the meeting and you're done. If they give you a hard no and they hang up, then the call's over. There's nothing you can do, you make your next call. So you don't even have to worry about those two outcomes. And that only leaves the third possible outcome that you should be prepared for, which are objections. So you wanna be prepared for the most common objections you typically get. I say that in most industries, the top three to five objections will typically account for like 80% of the objections you get. So you wanna get good at handling those first. When you get them, you wanna be able to respond like that. And I literally recommend making flashcards so that you're ready. Hey, we already work with a competitor. We don't have budget. We don't have the time or bandwidth right now. I'm not the right person. You wanna know exactly what to say when you get those because this is how you stay within the funnel. And my strategy when I get an objection is not to overreact, not to start questioning them about it or selling my solution. My focus is on selling time. I double down on what I asked for, the what piece of the value statement, which is time on their calendar. My strategy to do this is getting what I call two no's. So if they say, we already work with a competitor, I don't start asking them about how that competitor is going for them yet and when their renewal is up or anything like that, not yet at least, remain unfazed and we'll just say, got it. Yeah, that's actually why I was reaching out. We work with customers of X competitor all the time. So if there's ever a fit, we can move ahead. But I think it at least makes sense to get introduced and aligned going forward, even if it's just for 15 minutes next week, so that as other priorities come up, we'll be here and ready to support you and your team right out of the gate. So how does your calendar look next week on Wednesday or Thursday? Now this isn't gonna work every single time. In fact, it won't work the majority of the time. It's just a framework to follow, but it's gonna help you get small wins 10%, 20%, 30% of the time, depending on how good you get. And it will help you book meetings that you otherwise just wouldn't have booked. I'm not gonna start asking them about their competitor yet and trying to convince them on and off the cuff cold call that all of a sudden they should switch onto our solution. I'd rather be selling the time and getting them to a meeting where then I can go into more detail there. I'm gonna have their time and attention on an agreed upon time that we set aside. I'm not gonna change their mind on an off the cuff cold call. Rarely ever is that gonna work. So now as promised, I'll put this framework into action with an example I just wrote for myself and I'll point out where I am at each step in the process. It should only take about 45 seconds to get a quality shot on net. So I call someone, I say, hey John, this is Connor Murray, call from X company. How have you been? Good, I'm just reaching out because our team supports X company and we work on marketing priorities related to campaign execution, lead management and account scoring in the professional services space, usually through data-driven targeting and reporting automation. And I know I kind of called you out of the blue here, so I'm more just looking to set up some time to introduce you to our team and get aligned with your priorities in FY24. How's your calendar look next week on Wednesday or Thursday? So you can go back and time that. It should have been 45 seconds or less, and I answered those three key questions. I told them what priorities we worked on, I told them how we solved them, and then I stated my intent that I wanted to set aside time at a later date. I focused on selling the time. That's called getting a quality shot on net. That's a non-zero probability that I'm gonna book a meeting. Where most SDRs go wrong is their cold call scripts don't include that last piece. They don't include the intent. And if you don't ask for time on their calendar, then you don't have a chance of booking the meeting. You have a 0% chance of booking the meeting if you don't ask. So you need to get yourself on the playing field. You literally increase your odds by an infinite percent just by asking. And the point of this video is to demonstrate this framework and how easy it is to implement. It's not the exact words. I'm not telling you that was the best cold call script of all time, but that framework is gonna help a lot of you feel more comfortable on cold calls. So it's on you to fill in those gaps with priorities and challenges that you solve that are more specific to your niche and industry. There's a lot of ways to tweak this and everyone's different. Some people are more comfortable with different language, pauses at different times. So you need to practice and rehearse this so that when that process prospect says hello and you get that assumptive formality and advance to step two, it's go time because you've practiced this hundreds of times off script. So hope this helped. If it did, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.